on to the last talk of the week, which is going to be Meet the Moles. Uh, first of all, can people let me know whether they can hear us? Otherwise, toggle, toggle, toggle. Just waiting for people to respond. Okay, excellent. Uh, people have got seem to have got sound, and we're going to paste the stream where you can watch this. Uh, okay, and what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to do a roll call of all the moles that we've got here on stage. And what I'm going to do is do the front row, who are the moles who are going to be talking to you. I'm going to start off on the left and work to the right. And the first mole is Abner Mole. Hello. And then we have Naughty Mole. Hello. And then we have me and Patch Linden next to me. Hiya. And then we have Squeaky Mole. Hi there. Then we have Missy Mole. Hi, everyone. And then we have a lot of Mole. Hello. Now going for the back row. On the left, we have Glowing Mole. Next to him, we have a Mole Mole for a wonder, and that's Quartz Mole. And then we have Spiffy Mole, Lost Mole, Squishy Mole, Glamorous Mole. Looking very glamorous in uh, a dinner jacket and bow tie. We then have Ancient Mole, Garden Mole, Paranormal, Shimmy Mole, and last but not least, Magic Mole. And I'd like to thank all of the moles and Patch for joining me here today. <clears throat> Housekeeping note, we're going to do, as always, I'm going to ask you to pass any questions you have to either Dorney Davio or um, Patch Linden. And they'll be, um, Patch will be forwarding those questions later in the show. But Let's start by asking a few questions of the moles who are going to talk. Some of the moles don't talk, they just type. But as this is going out on a live stream, we're going to talk to the moles. So I'd like to ask how you came to work as a mole. And I'll kick off with Abner. Uh, well, I was started with uh, when the LDPW started way back in 2008, um, I think there was some blog post or, or in the forums or something, and um, somebody directed me to it. So I put it in an application and um, talked to Michael and way back in the day, and that's how it kind of started. It's still kind of fuzzy because it was 11 years ago now. Right. Naughty, what about you? You've been a mole for quite a while as well, I think. Yes. Um, um, just over 11 years ago, I was approached by Jack Linden, and um, he said they were starting this new group called Linden Department of Public Works, and would I like to join um, with the aim to improve the mainland um, for, and make 
the experience better for residents. So I said yes, and that's what I've been doing ever since. And of course, I think you were involved in Barney's Bay, is it, on the an island off the mainland? Oh yes, yeah, that was um, one of the regions that we um, did up, you know, to make a um, a nice, interesting place for residents to visit. Hmm. And of course, there's the Sea of Fables. Yes, yes, that's um, that was quite a long time ago, um, mm. but it was a nice place for like people to sail around and visit. And they're still there. You can still go and visit them. There's some interesting things to find there. Oh yes, there is. Yeah. Um, <sighs> We've got lots of um, old content. I mean, we've been do doing this for like 11 years now. So um, there's loads of interesting places. In it. And coming on to Squeaky, how did you come to join? Um, I actually joined exactly a year ago. Um, I got discovered on SLB as an exhibitor. Uh, the Lindens came to my region and... As I was sitting there, I suddenly saw like first two, five, like suddenly 20. I was like, what is going on? And uh, a bit later, I just kind of like Patch asked me like, would you be interested to be a mole? And I'm like, uh, are you joking? And it took me a few days to actually realize he wasn't joking. And slowly from there, I just kind of became who I am now. And Missy, how about you? Well, I am just about a year old, too. I think my res day might have been exactly a year ago today. And just like Squeaky, it was a complete surprise to me. I happened to have a very good friend who was a mole, and she worked with marketing, taking pictures. And last year, Patch was looking for a few extra moles to come on and help taking pictures for marketing and other um, projects. And I was approached about that. So I started doing that and was kind of just available to do anything and everything. And then luckily fell into working with SLB this year, which has been a wonderful experience. Yes, I was going to say that Squeaky and Missy, you've done quite a lot of the work on SL16B. Squeaky um, took the lead on it. And in April, I think he approached me and asked if um, I would like to help. And doing events in SL is something that I have a lot of experience with. So I said, sure, I'll help. And I did not realize <laughs> to the extent um, that I would be helping, but I've been very pleased to be involved with it. Right. And, and Squeaky has just been amazing with what he's been able to coordinate and pull together. So I'm, it is actually your res day today. I just looked, you <laughs> see. So maybe the audience ought to have a quick chorus of happy res day. <laughs> well, I think that would really apply to me and Squeaky and Alada. We all joined within about a week of each other last year. Okay, collective. <laughs> happy res day then. Alotta, how did you come to join? Well, a year ago, I met Patch, which was like the first Linden I ever met, because even though I have a lot of years in Second Life, I never met any Linden. And he just checked my profile and saw that I have the Flickr pictures, and he just wanted me on the team for marketing. And, and I was like, are you kidding me? Of course, I want to be part of the moles. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. So that's raised an interesting point. Um, that that's raised an interesting point. Um, that the moles do a, a kind of wide range of things. Can you tell me some of the things you do? I'm going to go round you all again. Um, but then I we can bring out some of the other things that you do. Abner, what about you? What kind of things do you do as a mole? 
Um, I do a uh, a little bit of everything and a lot of nothing. Uh, <laughs> to kind of put it that way. Uh, sort of a I, I kind of describe it as a jack of all trades, but a master of. Um, right now, what I've been doing mostly is laying out um regions for uh the Linden Homes Bellis area continent. And, yeah. and 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 that kind of goes to towards what I would want to say is that, you know, we all work as a team. So as we as, as much as we have our own specialities in a lot of cases, one of the things I would do also is I would make the the videos and things for, for like Paleo Quest and, and then the yeah. Linden Realms and all of that. Um but it's a team effort. So I Everything that I do relies on all of these moles that you see sitting here and behind us. You know, a lot of the stuff I couldn't do without the content and things that those guys are making. So even though I'm not making the actual content, hmm. it, it's very much a team effort in everything that we do. Um, but really, that's what I'm doing is I'm taking the things that they're making right now and putting it all together. Right. And that's that's a job that is huge because you're now trying for releasing a region every well three times a week, aren't you? Yes, yes, we are. We're we're, we're trying to release them essentially as fast as we as we can, mm -hmm. um, while still you know keeping it as good as as uh, people expect it to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and, it, and even that's just not me. I mean, we have, uh, a lot of these moles are helping with, uh, the, the decoration and then, then the quality assurance and, and all of those things to make sure that, uh, those things get done on time so we can get them out. Which of course, everyone is very keen to have them coming out. That, oh, that's oh, believe wonderful. me. Yeah. We, we're, we're quite aware of that. Mm. <laughs> you, you may have noticed. Yeah. Um, you're also crafting the regions individually, aren't you? I mean, it's not kind of a cookie cutter job here. No, it's, it's not at all. It, it, um, it, it's very much uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to make this a true continent hmm. so that it, it, it has that. It's not just uh, a grid of uh, hmm. little pieces all put together, that it actually has that feel of a contiguous huge giant land landmass the way that the sort of the way that mainland yeah except a slightly more formal look yes very much so yeah so naughty what about you what sort of things do you do hi i uh, manage all the projects uh that we work on uh, make sure all the tasks are allocated so that you know who's um, mm. wants to do it and who's most suitable. Uh, track the project, keep all our you know documentation in order, uh, take meetings. Um, I also do um, some Photoshop work, decorating, recruitment, um, and lots of other things too. That's that sounds a really busy and vital role because yeah. especially with something like all the Linden home releases yes it, it is very it is very but um the things that I do um just interlink into what everybody else um every like um, Abner was saying we all work together as a, as a team mm. um and everybody's role is just as important as the next person's role because without it we wouldn't be able to do it mm. really we've had comments i don't know if you've seen them she's our mole mama says ancient mole oh. and <laughs> glowing mole says she keeps <laughs> it in good marching order <laughs> She's, she cracks that whip <laughs> squeaky what about you what kind of things do you do um, I originally joined as a scripter, uh, but I kind of became a mini Ebner and just kind of started doing like all kinds of stuff. Um, my biggest role right now with Linden Homes is QA, uh, making sure everything is you know correct as it should before we release anything. Um, I also have been doing a lot of management at SLB, as you can see. Um, I'm also 
pretty active on the mainland, including the railroad, as a lot of residents has did, have uh, discovered. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much like they said, it's pretty much a bit of everything. And Missy, obviously SL16B is a big thing for you. Yes, um, have put in a lot of work in the last several weeks on SL16B, mainly helping with the exhibitors get set up um, on their parcels. That was a, a huge job. There's a hundred close to 160 exhibitors and just working with all of them to get them set up was challenging at times, but always very rewarding to see the different exhibits come together. I started taking pictures. So I've, I've done some of that and I'm always happy to do that. I've had a chance to do some decorating. Um, for the Linden Homes, which has been a lot of fun. And I was just asked to organize the Belisaria Fairgrounds, which are a new event parcel in the um, Belisaria continent, where residents are going to be able to basically hold events for the community. So I'm getting that set up right now. Patch had spoken about that earlier this week, and mm -hmm. we hope to have that up and going within the next couple of weeks. We have a couple of events already scheduled next week for the 4th of July, so that'll be a lot of fun. Oh, that'll be exciting. Yeah, certainly go over and take a look at that. Are there going to be fireworks? Or is that a secret at the moment? Well, I will say that it's the 4th of July. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give anything away, but it is the 4th no. of July. <laughs> yeah, and there are traditions. Exactly. Alata, what about you? What sort of things have you been doing? Well, I think that you will find our answers a little bit always starting the same, which is, that we find ourselves doing a lot of stuff all together. Mm -hmm. I think we work a lot like like a family, and it's like whenever you need someone, they're just there to help. Mm -hmm. uh, I originally started as marketing, and exclusively marketing, and did a lot of the pictures that are out there, but then I found myself decorating for Linden Homes, and then I found myself working on SLB 16, and <laughs> that's why I was doing something else. Like I like to keep myself busy, so... Whenever I see a chance that I can help or do something, I just introduce myself there. That's great. Okay. I was going to ask all of you, you, you all have mole personalities, um, but are you moles all the time or do you spend time in your original avatar as well? And I'll roll through from Abner. Um, I, I, I am a mole a lot of the time, the primary mm -hmm. thing that I'm doing, but I do, uh, log in as a, as, as a regular resident. I mean, that's the other thing to remember that, yes, we're all moles, but we were residents before that and we're still mm -hmm. residents. I mean, in our off hours, yeah, we're, we're in world doing things uh, just uh -huh. like everybody else is. Mm -hmm. I think that's important because sometimes people hear that the moles are contractors and they think they've been kind of parachuted into Second Life. But that's not true, is it? You're, you all started as residents. Yes. And yeah. 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 What to, about to, you? To do what I, I just want to say, to, you know, to do what we're doing, we need to be residents. We need to have that understanding of, of how SL works and how things interact with each other. Everything from land to permissions to to what's necessary for for how things just work in Second Life. Right, glowing mole says it's like the secret personality of Batman, and a lot of mole agrees. Naughty, what about you? Do you spend much time as your original avatar still? Um. I don't spend as much time on my um, original avatar um, only because um, I 
do I I um I'm on my mobile, um avatar pretty much the time. But I do get to go on occasion and do get together and go out shopping and that which is a lot. I don't get to do it as much as I used to do and I do miss it. But I do like to try and do it to um you know, just keep in touch with what's going on and um go out and take part and socialize um so yeah that's it must be easier to go to things like gigs and concerts and music events as your original avatar rather than as naughty because people are going oh, it's a mole yes uh that is true yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, um, what about the you three have come in more recently? So, do you find you still spend time as your original avatars, Squeaky and Missy and uh, uh, Lotta? Um, I think I would say I spend like 50 50% of time myself, mm -hmm. uh, mostly also because the QA job I do I feel like paying attention to what's happening in a cell and you know what people actually enjoy and what they expect is kind of important to this so I, I explore a lot on both of my accounts trying to figure out what people would like especially now with Linden Homes project you know I have to sometimes sneak around figuring out what they like um, so yeah I definitely would say it, it's a balance for me I do think in the morning I spend most of my resident and uh, evening, it's more work. Interesting. Sort of reverse of the conventional way of doing it. Um, what about you, Missy? Well, I I don't actually spend a lot of time on my uh, original avatar, but I, I do still have a region under her, and there are events that I do, not as a mole. So I'm certainly a part of the community, not as a mole, but I feel like I spend more concentrated time in SL as a mole recently. Hmm. Well, SL16B has been a huge thing. What about you, Elotta? Well, I do use my resident a lot, to be honest, because Second Life always been my creative space, like a little escape to do the things that you cannot do in real life in creative-wise. Mm -hmm. So I always enjoy quite a lot to be part of Second Life. I think the mold part is, is more like the little dream that I had to make Second Life an awesome experience for everybody else, too, and, and beautify Second Life in... in with the perspective I, I had at the moment. So, so yeah, but the resident is still pretty active. Like, <laughs> sometimes they even mix, like, like I'm working, I'm using my resident at the same time. It's, it's always there. So. so I'm going to ask Patch to come in with a, a question now because we've got rather a lot of questions, which is brilliant. Oh, goodness, yeah. We've got so many. Um, <laughs> picking, picking, picking. Hmm. You know, hey, Beth Megan, she, she actually made a comment. Um, she just wants to tell Quartzy Wartzy that she loves him. Um, <laughs> that's kind of, hmm. <laughs> that's rather sweet, yes. So an another question, or a question uh, that came up is, um, strange things often happen in SL. What's the weirdest problem you've ever had to fix with a mole build? I think Ooh. probably somebody on the panel can take this. Yes, that's a good question. I'd like to go for it. Abner, what do you think is the weirdest one? You've oh, ever had to that's really, that's really difficult to answer. Um, uh, 
I think part of it is the fact that there's there's been so much. Um, uh, there's a lot of frustrating. <laughs> I guess that could be it. Uh, we've had a lot of it, with the games. We get a lot of people that, that are that try to find creative ways not to play the game that they are supposed <laughs> to. Um, I guess I could, probably could mention that one. Um, we found that um, in, in the Paleo Quest game, there's a game, they're part of the Paleo Quest game where at the end you have to take a giant swab and you have to go and you have to, you know, find the, the dino DNA and you do that by using the giant cotton swab for uh, picking up the dino feces. And uh, it tells you whether or not it's a good one or it's a bad one. And I think it, it's amazing how creative residents can be because we found that somebody was going around and they would always find the quote unquote good poop huh. the very first time. And we were like, how are they doing this? And we're looking and we're looking and we're looking. And finally we, we realized that, there was a timestamp on the creation of the object that was different between the quote unquote good ones and the ones that gave you the, this is a bad one. Go ahead and, and try again. They had gone that deep into it to figure out that that was, that was the, the, that was how to tell the difference. That is incredible. Right. Yeah, and of course, once we realized that's what they were doing, we went and fixed it so that there was no discernible way to tell the difference. But it, it, that was the weirdest thing. Every once in a while, especially with the games, we have to watch and it's okay, how are they doing this? What are they doing? And then yeah. try to figure out a way around it. Okay, well, I think you set the bar pretty high there, actually, for the weirdest thing to do. Fixing dinosaur poop is pretty... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, naughty. What about you? What's the weirdest thing you've had to do? Oh, um, I was going to say what I've not said. <laughs> uh, I think now. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, I can't think of anything. The top off the top of my head. Yeah, part of, it, I, part of it. I part of part of it. I feel like is we have it happen s <laughs> at an abnormally high frequency, um, you know. And and, it, and it's like I am even sitting here trying to think of. I mean, just whenever we have these things happen, you know, we're all usually together in a collective group, and we discover this thing. It happens, and we all have a really good time laughing about it, <laughs> fixing it, going, "Wow." we couldn't have imagined this happening and you know we move on and and the frequency in which that happens i i don't know maybe we just kind of put it in the back memory bank and kind of forget about it again but i'm sure that there's you know got to be like a blooper reel or something like that out there that just would be a a, a barrel of laughs and and a and you know, with all the comedies of errors and stuff like that we've had over the years, um, mm -hmm. they're just not coming to us, I guess, quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I can, I can understand that. To, so, someone has just said that she, CB Axel has just said that she rarely plays the game. She dies even more often than Safia does. Oh, I think not. <laughs> I think my record is is pretty peerless for dying in games. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We usually design games around killing you. Oh, I didn't say that. Yeah. Out loud. Yeah, I've I've noticed. Okay, and in multiple and terrible ways. Right, patch. Next question, please. All right. Um, <laughs> do you get to choose when you work? Hmm. Yes. Good question. To what extent do you sort of set your own hours? And let's start with this one with naughty, because you're presumably yeah. assigning people work hours. <laughs> um, it's totally flexible. It's up to people when they work. Um, pick and, people pick and choose their own hours. Um. Mm -hmm. 
way that we work is we have uh, deadlines on our actual project. So as long as we get everything by a certain date, pretty flexible. People can just log on when it's convenient for them. Um, and we just communicate really well with them. So that's kind of glues everything together so that we end up with the final product. Of course. So, yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. And also, I'd like to say we have people from all around the world, different time zones. So, we play, um, we're just sending messages. It's going mm. on about like 24 7. There's always mm. someone online and always someone, you know, chatting. And so, it works. It actually works really well. That's brilliant. I've I've noticed that we've got a variety of accents, English, European, American, in the talking molds. And I, I think that we've got more in the molds who aren't actually talking as well. So you're coming from so many different places. Yes. Yep. All different countries, all different time zones. But it really works. It works really well. And of course, this this might be sort of unnecessary to to say, but this is paid work. Yes, we do get paid for more. Work. I thought I should throw that in because some people do stuff in the lab without being paid. Um, but you are proper contractors and get paid for it. Yes. Patch, do you want to ask another question? Sure. Um, how do moles come up with their names? Is it something that you match your personality? Is it given to you? How did it happen? Um, I think I can answer that a little bit, for me at least. From what I know, we got three options to pick from. Well, not options to pick from. We say three names we like, and um, we go in order on which one is available. Uh, I can tell you, though, that it definitely seems to be a really hard um, job to do, to pick a name, because all the people that I see joining do the same reaction I did, and it's like, I, I really don't know what to pick. Oh, my God. Help me, help me, help me. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really tough decision at first because you have to, I mean, this is the name you're going to have. So it's, it, make your choices carefully. Mm. I, I mean, in some ways, I kind of regret, I, I mean, I love my name, Abnormal. It's like, I can't love that. But uh, being the letter A, I tend to get picked first <laughs> yeah. a lot. And <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. So, um, are there I any would... of you who really, really like your name and any of you that would really like to change your name? I will say something about my name. I thought and thought and thought that I spent days trying to come up with my name and finally came up with mischievous. And I thought I was so clever because not only is it a fun name, but I spelled it in an alternative way of spelling it. So when I spell it like in Google or an email or something, it automatically wants to autocorrect. Oh, it doesn't man. recognize it. <laughs> and I also discovered that it's incredibly difficult for people <laughs> to type to me. They, they don't know. It's too long. Most people want to stop after about five letters. And so that's why I renamed myself Missy. Um, but <laughs> The funny thing is, after I picked it, even though I liked it, I kept thinking about names and it finally dawned on me about three weeks ago, I was taking a walk and I'm like, oh my God, I should have been Freckle Mole. That would have been the perfect name. Right. 
Well, we even got so used to the Missy part that even when I mentioned what was your original name, they were like, who is that one? And I was like, that's Missy. <laughs> it's just, we never call her by that name, but it's Missy. <laughs> yeah. Well, when the new name changes come in, you can change it completely. Or I could just change it. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't tell you how. Okay. Right, another question. All right. So do the moles have official in-world vehicles to drive around in? No, we don't. But it's a nice idea. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, a, a lot of the times if we're driving, it, it, it's we're driving to test. So we wanted to try to test with different vehicles and vehicles that, that residents will, will be using as well. It's like if I'm making something that's going to be like a boating area, like in a lot of the Bellis area, I'm using some of the boats that, that – uh, the same boats that residents use. Mm -hmm. One thing I wanted, I, I, there has been discussion reference this week to railways and the New Linden home continent. I was wondering about buses. Would it be possible to have something like Yavanna's, uh, Clan Fairs, um, podcast, but as buses to go around the continent? Uh, it, it's actually very possible. In fact, I, we made a, a, uh, tour, not a really a tour. It, it's, it's a ferry that, uh, a water taxi that goes to the Bellis area mm. fairgrounds area. And I actually purchased and used, uh, Yvonne's, uh, tour scripts mm. in order to, uh, script that. So, I mean, it's very possible. I'm not saying it will happen. I'm not saying it won't happen. I'm just saying it's. Uh, it could it, happen. It, it, it could happen. Because hmm. I love her. I love her scripts and her buses. And it's been working really well, I think, here at uh, SL16B. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've actually gone on the mainland and taken her pod tours over the mainland many times just to, you know, for, for fun. Just to, to I'll find a road that I made 10 years ago and, oh, there's a pod tour going by and I'll just hop on it. And you know, maybe one of the moles will be with me and we'll just watch the mainland go by is, and see what's changed, what hasn't changed. And, oh, that's neat over there. And, mm -hmm. yeah, they work, they, they work very well. Um, I just wanted to add to it, too, that we do have a few LDPW uh, vehicles, but they're not official. We got them gifted from residents. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have them, like some have them, some don't. We're allowed to share them between us moles and no one else, of course. Uh, and you may see us with them sometimes. I, I personally love driving around with them as, uh, as well while testing stuff. Mm. So we do have some unofficial ones, basically. That's very cool. Patch, another question? Sure. Do moles have secret parties? <laughs> um, how secret are your secret parties, guys? I think it's a pretty much a party every single week, especially yeah. the meetings. We had one in public the other day at the trailer area. <laughs> we, we, yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. We did. <laughs> yeah, our, our our parties are more just like flash mobs. Uh, yeah, we had some fun over at the camping area and sitting there when that uh, opened up and just, you know, having fun, seeing how many s'mores would fit in, inside of a trailer. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. In fact, we're now we're now uh, rating our trailers based on uh, s'more capacity. Right. Oh, I love that idea, yes. But what size are the s'mores? How big are they? Uh, Don't ask him to show you. No, no you, you, you don't want to know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, about the size of that coffee, because I. <laughs> okay, so yeah. they're quite large s'mores. I'll, I'll show you later. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, I say we also just recently uh, did something over at the fairgrounds too. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, were playing on the up. big get together. Yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a big open yeah. space with nothing in it right now and and before you know it, you know, Squishy's setting off a nuke. So. I know you also have awesome gowns, especially the uh female molds. I've I've turned up and you've all been dressed to the nines. Especially when you race through a game, you know, holding big guns and uh <clears throat> and wearing evening dresses. I remember going through um what's it called? The one that's in um the adult region, Horizons, the Horizons game. Oh, with yes. With you all in evening dress. Yeah, that was such fun. Of course, yeah. I died. We, we tend to have fun when we're, uh, before any of those games go out, there's a lot of testing, load testing that we have to do. And, and those tend to turn into parties because we have, you know, everybody's playing <laughs> the game at the same time, which is actually a really good way to, to test it. And it's a really good way to see. You know, how, is this really as fun as, as we intended it to be? And if we're having fun testing it, we're definitely hoping that the residents are going to have fun playing it. I can, I can definitely see that. Ha ha ha! Yes, yeah, sorry, someone in chat has just said, why do moles always cheat in the snowball fights? I think that should be answered. <laughs> like I probably started that with my yellow snowball gun. <laughs> With your yellow what? I have a yellow snow snowball gun. Okay. <laughs> and, it, and it has unlimited rapid fire. Mm-hmm. The, the simple answer to that is, is because we're just so outnumbered. I mean, I think the very first snowball fight, I was in there, and it was like me, another mole, and one of the Lindens, and that was it. So we had all of the residents all trying to, to, to attack us, and it was just us three. We were completely overwhelmed. So yeah, I resorted to things like I, w- I would stand up on the parapet, and then um, as people would climb up the stairs, they couldn't fly. They would climb up the stairs to try to get to me. I would turn the the, fa- the stairs phantom, and they'd all fall down. <laughs> and then I'd turn it back again, and then wait for them to get up to the top. And then no, I turn phantom, and they all fall. <laughs> yes, lots of cheating. Yes, but it's all in fun. Yeah, yeah. So, Patch, another question. So what does it take to become a mole? Hmm. Probably a good question for Naughty. Um, what does it take to become a mole? Um, well, you've got to apply for it and just, you know, be just nice and friendly and um, willing to work as part of a team. And willing to put up with everybody's warped sense of humour. And, yeah, be yourself, pretty much. Um, And work well as a team, really. And I guess, you know, have proven creativity in some field or another. Oh, yes, of course. Um, A talent, content creation or scripting, sound making um you know in photoshop or um you know um just skills that would you know um work well within the team and the kind of work that we do and mm. um, yeah mm. and garden Moore just said and passion for second life yes a passion for second life really really help as well mm. Mm. yeah so i can probably expand on it a little bit too um I also had another question kind of rolling in the background, like what skills are required. So it really kind of depends, you know, eat everyone on the team kind of has, you know, their, you know, specialties and what, what they're strong with. Um, you know, you've already heard Abner talk a little bit about how he is, you know, uh, kind of a jack of all trades. He does a whole bunch of different things, but, you know, we do have, um, you know, moles who specifically do scripting work and we have moles who specifically do mesh content work and texturing, um, or just texturing. We have moles that do texturing and photography work. Uh, we have moles that do sound work, animation work, you know, so, so if, if you can pretty much think of each thing or each specialty area that, you know, you can 
touch and or do content creation um, for Second Life and within Second Life, you know, we, we pretty much cover and or have to cover every single one of those areas. Um, and, and, and in some of those areas, we have needs for more than, you know, just one person. Uh, you know, mm. like there's there's several scripters, like I mentioned, there's several mesh content creators, you know, etc. Um, there's folks who specialize in doing terraforming work. And I say terror forming because it's ter yeah. terrifying. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, folks that do region decor work, right? You know, a lot of you have been mm -hmm. watching Bellisaria kind of unfold in front of you and the work that's been being put into that. And that team of moles that you see running around out there putting down the, 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 the tree decor and the walkways and the roads and, you know, all of that stuff. You know, there's, there's folks who specialize in doing just that. They've got an eye for, you know, kind of putting that stuff out and together, um, managing things like land impact usage and structure, uh, you know, mm -hmm. of how a region is being laid out. And, you know, maybe they don't, you know, have a lot of uh, capability in actually making that content, but the other people in the team that do make that content do that for them. And they're the ones that then carry through to that next step, right? Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> You, you're looking for all these kind of skills at different times and building up. Do you always have vacancies for moles or is it something that only comes up periodically? We, I, I like to keep the doors open. <laughs> um, uh, we, we do have specific vacancies at specific times, you know, that come up and, and stuff. Uh, you know, our, our, our needs change. Um, you know, like right now we are looking for uh, you know, folks who can do kind of that re region decor work and terraforming, and we're looking for somebody who can probably do QA work because that's another specific area uh, that, you know, we have needs in, um, especially with London Homes. Um, and yeah, folks who can do, uh, you know, really good high detail mesh work and stuff. Um, you know, that, that's kind of where our needs sit right now. And, and you know, we're mm. kind of always keeping an eye out for uh, you know, folks who are interested in doing that type of stuff, you know, I always consider everybody, anybody that has an interest in working with us, I always talk to them and say, you know, what do you do and show me, show me what you've done uh, and stuff like that. So we usually like to see kind of like, you know, examples, samples and portfolios of the work that you've done. Um, you know, it is really no different in a lot of ways from a it's a it's a paid contractor freelancing contractor position you know so you actually go through an interview process and everything i expect to see a cover letter and um you know either a very detailed specific built second life resume for yourself you know or cv or mm. or real life i get plenty of people who send me their real life resume too um you know it's it's akin to basically applying to, for a job So, if you're interested, maybe send your resume to Patch. Yep, myself or Derek, either one of us. Um, we prefer them to generally come in via email directly, uh, just so that we can kind of keep good track of them and stuff. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. sending them on note cards and stuff is even even via note cards is easily lost in the shuffle. Uh, you know, just as an example, I've received almost mm. 14 note cards just sitting here alone with questions in them. So <laughs> if you send me a note card with, you know, your information buried in there, uh, you know, it might take me a little while to find it if I hopefully can find it. Um, so mm. I usually suggest people to email me, you know, contact me directly. Or to Eric. Uh, are you happy to give out email address here? Yeah, it's patch at lindenlab.com. It's not hard to figure us out. <laughs> Yeah. And Derek at lindenlab.com. Pretty easy. Derek being spelt like oil, Derek, isn't it? D R R I C K. That's correct. Yeah. I think he's probably out okay. here somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So, another question, Patch, now that people know how to apply. <laughs> uh, so, another question that popped up. Um, let's see. How do I go about reporting a problem uh, with, you know, something out on the mainland that may have an issue? What do we usually uh, like to see there? Now, I'd like to <clears throat> give an ex sort of do a follow up question to that as well, because there's some very old content out there. And um, I wonder if that's ever going to get overhauled like Vengan.
like the old um, skiing area. Do you think that, I know that you know there are problems with the old snow continent area. Do you think that will ever get upgraded? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you know, we, we have a lot of that stuff on our radar, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it's all about a matter of prioritization for us. You know, our our most recent kind of first line priorities have been uh, Linden Homes and SLB. In fact, SLB kind of mm -hmm. even overtook Linden Homes there just into the, you know, immediate lead up to, uh, you know, this opening up. Uh, now that mm -hmm. this is open, running, you know, uh, and stuff like that, you know, it's it's all about resource shifting. So we can kind of pull resources back away from this a bit, and we can go focus back on our other priority, which is Linden Homes releases. Um, in fact, uh, you know, we even on Monday said and started out, you know, with the statement that our cadence would be, you know, a region like every other day. If, you know, that seems like something we can manage. And in fact, we not only have done that, but we released two regions today, not just one. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm, I'm expecting, and again, another reason why we're looking for uh, a few more moles um, is that as, you know, this resource shifting around kind of happens and as our project timelines, you know, kind of change and coalesce for us as we go through the rest of the year, you know, things are going to pick up speed and we're going to get faster with these things. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, especially with the, the Linen Homes releases. So, um, yeah, I think... But... Uh, I, I kind of jumped on that, I'm afraid, because the actual question, how do people report if they find a problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah. so JIRA, um, file a JIRA bug report, um, and those actually do get sent up to the team. In fact, we just recently, as a working example, we just recently had one reported to us about um, a, uh, a small collision problem with the roads that... Um, hmm. You know, through all of our testing and everything like that, we did not see any problems with with all the various vehicles that we have and use to test. Um, but if mm -hmm. you just so happen to, um, I guess, try to drive through a, a particular road piece corner that has a interesting slight physics variation in it from the way it was uploaded, we found, um, you know, it can send your vehicle on a good hop uh, if you hit it just right. Um, but, you know, it's uh, something that came into us through a bug report by Ajira. Um, it got shuttled over to our team internally. Uh, we've already fixed it. It's gone through the QA process and um, it's just waiting to be released at this point. So that's the best way to get them to us. Excellent. Okay. Do you have another question? I do. Let's see. I've got so many good questions here. while Patch is looking through and finding a question. Um, I'm just going to ask the moles assembled here briefly. Um, <clears throat> what would you say is the, your favorite project that you've worked on just going around? Abner, what was your favorite project? Uh, well, I've said before, people have always asked me that. And, and my favorite project always seems to be the one we're working on the most at the time. And I I have to say that th it's definitely true in this case, which is uh, Belisaria and uh, mm -hmm. and Linden Homes. Um, it, it, it's by far the biggest and the most enjoyable one that I've had so far. And I, I see that continuing in in, uh, in in going forward in the future too it, it it's one of the best ones that i've ever worked on and i and i, I just love doing it and i love seeing how it's coming together i love just seeing the community that's being built around it and it's just wonderful naughty what about you I used to really enjoy um, when we used to go around and do, you know, mainland parcel. 
mm. here and there. So it was things like, Bar- like you mentioned before, Barney's Bay and Sea of Fable. I also mm. really, really loved making uh, Paleo Quest with everyone. That was oh, a lot yeah. of fun. Um, yeah, we laughed a lot making that. It was. Um, I don't know if anybody knows, but there are some um, quite a few Easter eggs hidden in Paleo mm. Quest. If anyone, I don't know if anyone's found them. I'm not going to say what they are. <laughs> of course, um, there would be Easter eggs. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, um, I enjoyed. Um, I enjoyed helping to put the birthday together, and mm-hmm. I also, yeah, I'm really enjoying Blinden Home. I'm really enjoying that. That's I, I love the resident response because what yeah. we do is we, we're doing things for residents to enjoy. So when we mm. get a very good response, it just makes it feel all worthwhile and we know we're on the right track and everything. Yeah. Right. What about you, Squeaky? Um, I don't think there's really a favorite one for me. All of them have uh, a unique uh, a part of it that makes it a favorite. Linen Homes definitely is the community. Hearing everything back, I think, has been really great for all of the malls. You know, mm-hmm. it's really, I think, honestly, one of the first times we really hear so much feedback. Um, but there's also the games like Vin and Realms. Testing that was definitely one of my favorites. It was just so much fun doing that as a team, uh, breaking everything and just so there's just a lot of different parts. And the same with SLB now, um, we have actually really enjoyed uh, managing this. It was a lot of work, but again, the community and hearing back on what people think of it is definitely just one of my favorite things. Hmm. Missy, what about you? I would say definitely SLB. I have really enjoyed working with the community and seeing all the creativity, especially that people bring to their exhibits. We basically ask them to try to design to the theme of the 1950s, and they have been incredibly creative in the approach to interpreting the 1950s. Not everybody was able to stay within theme, but we have things from the Korean War to uh, London after or the UK after World War II to diners and drive-in movie theaters and uh, feminism of the 1950s. So it's it's really been very exciting to see that. creativity from the community and then just the overall good feeling of interacting with everybody, everybody being so cooperative and enthusiastic about being here and celebrating 16 years of Second Life. And it's very inspiring. Brilliant. Alotta, what about you? Well, I will agree with Squeaky that each experience gives you a different feeling. Like, obviously, we don't have as many years as other malls in here, and we'll have way more to tell than us. But testing in the malls was, as a group, was an amazing experience. There are things that we'll never forget from that one, like naughty screaming, why is everybody getting caught by the mist? <laughs> but, <laughs> and, and then, just like Linden Homes, it, it's amazing because, like, we just had a bunch of regions that have nothing and see how they turn into what it is today mm-hmm. and then see what the residents did with it because that's like another factor it's not just what we did it's what the residents turned it into and it's a really awesome experience because they really value everything like they they made it even better to be honest like you go around and you go check in their houses and you see all they do and it really feels like a neighborhood the ambience is amazing and, and it makes you happy to see that result in a, in, a, in a big project like that. That's great. What about people on the back row? Do you have any particular favourites that you can type about? Oh. 
And while they're typing patch, perhaps you can bring out the next question. Sure. I got a fun one. So who came up with the idea for the short bus to Rancho Cucamonga in the desert areas of Linden Realms? Oh, that would be me. Because you cut out. You cut out, Patch. Can you say that again? Any idea who came up with the idea for the short bus to Rancho Cucamonga in the desert areas of Linden Realms? Of where? Linden Realms. Linden Realms, okay. Oh, yeah, that 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 would be me. That goes back about uh, about years and years ago. Um, it's actually a story about uh real life. Uh, my wife and I moved out to California for a while, and was we were driving by, and we seen the signs for Rancho Cucamonga, and it. Was, it's just a funny name to say. Yeah. So I, I started saying it as, you know, beautiful downtown Rancho Cucamonga. And she thought it was <laughs> crazy. And, and, you know, years later, we're doing the videos for uh, uh, Linden Realms. And we've got the announcer guy character and in the video. And it was just, I just, kind of just snuck it in there, you know, beautiful downtown Rancho Cucamonga. And, and, <laughs> and it, it worked. And the, and the funny part of it is if you've ever been to Rancho Cucamonga, there, it, it, it there isn't much of a downtown really. <laughs> so it's kind of a misnomer. I, I mean, no offense to Rancho Cucamonga. I'm sure it has a lovely downtown. Um, it's just, I haven't ever been, been able to find yeah. it. I was just going to say that um, talking about places they've loved, Garden Mall said, I enjoyed making the Linden Highways at the start, dealing with the landscape challenges and residents, and I loved building the original Linden Realms. It was such a new and exciting thing for Second Life at that time, but there's been so many things. And Squishy has said, my favourites are Linden Homes. And what the Avatar team does for the new starter avatars. Yes, we mustn't forget that. Um, that the, you've got the, <clears throat> you've got the, one of the things the Moz does is regularly update the avatars. Does anyone want to say anything about the avatars? Uh, has my, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Uh, we're just trying to think of, I, 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 our, we have a kind of a subset of moles who work primarily with the, the, uh, the avatars. Uh, they're kind of mm-hmm. referred to them as the avatar team. And uh, none of them are on the on the stage at the moment, um, but uh, yeah, the avatars have been something that we've been working on for years, just to try to improve the 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 look of the basic vault. I mean, we all remember the the original boy next door uh, <laughs> newbie uh, avatars from way back in the day, and just trying to get people a, a, a better starting point. And uh, and they have improved over the years. Yes, they have. Yes, very greatly. I, I, there's been some hiccups, like when the mesh avatars came in, which were really then quite hard to dress. Yeah. People. Yeah, that, that that was a little bit of a, okay, this sounded like a good idea at the time, but uh, mm. actually looking back at it, it probably wasn't the best thing to do. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then we quickly kind of went back to the whole thing with uh, the classic avatars and Mm. Augmenting the classic avatars the way residents in Second Life augment their 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 basic standard classic avatars, and uh, of course now they they uh, at some point a lot of them move on to mesh avatars. But um, we like giving residents that initial step as far as uh, kind of being the bridge to that. You know, here's your starting point. Here's where you can go. And yes. enticing them to 
you know, follow that path. Mm. Uh, Glamorous Linden says, I think the new punishment for breaking the covenant is the Linden should revert you to Ruth. Yes, we all remember coming in as, well, quite a lot of us remember coming in as Ruth. So, Abner, I hear that you're more than one character, and we had a hint of that already. Oh, yeah, oh, like, yeah. Actually, if you if you watch the videos, I think I am, there are some videos where I am all the characters, um, <laughs> which is kind of funny after I edit the whole thing together. It's, it's really just me talking to myself. Um I do the I do the voices of, of Punky. I do the voice of the announcer guy, and I do the voice of Magellan. Can we hear and, some of them? Well, a Punky I can't do because I I do that post uh, recording. Right, right. Um, you know, annou- announcer guy is just you know Rancho Cucamonga. And it, um, it's that typical you know game show host sort of voice, and, mm-hmm. and Magellan is a little bit harder. It, it's it's I kind of based it on a little bit of my uncle from Kentucky, uh, a guy I worked with, and uh, Larry the Cable Guy. He's <laughs> got that rough kind of voice, kind of like that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it it seemed to fit our Magellan avatar, and it, it just yeah. kind of went from there. And it was kind of fun, you know. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> it helps if I have the. The uh, uh, the script written out, you know, give him yeah. funny things to say. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. He has his and little course, colloquialisms. You joined Residence on the Grid. You were in the Fairland Players for much ado about nothing, yes. weren't you? You played Dogbury. Yes, which Dogbury was a, uh, was a, was a tiny, but I essentially did the Magellan voice as a tiny. <laughs> yeah. And that was great. Still very popular. Okay, Patch, how are we doing for questions? Because it's now the top of the hour. <laughs> we, <laughs> we do still have a lot. Um, I, I, I've got actually probably two more, I think, if we were to pick two more. Um, okay. And the first, the first one is kind of a two-part question. Um, so how similar, and this is probably for everyone on the panel can answer this, how similar to your original avatar is your mole persona? Do you find yourself going with what you know or having fun being totally different? Abner, would you like to kick off? Uh, sure. Um, my dog will shut up. Um, I, I, I mean, I started out with my mole avatar being, I mean, we all kind of started out with, with our original, uh, Back in the day, we all had the little tiny mole avatar that Quartz is wearing. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of migrated to, okay, this is great, but it's hard to test things for size for avatars <laughs> when we're all these little tinies. And so gradually, everybody just started going to whatever avatar they wanted to wear. Um, for a while, I was an avatar that was based on my my actual uh, main avatar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then after that, I would you know, pick up different avatars here and there. I picked up this avatar, uh, and you know, that became punky in the videos and, and, you know, every once in a while I'll try a different avatar, but I, I seem to come, be coming back to this one for some reason. I, d- I just like it. It's very cute. It works. And it's very lightweight, yeah. which is, which is really good. Naughty, what about you? Um, I change my avatar um, quite often. It's normally um, when we go out shopping, I'm like, oh, I like that. Oh, I need this. And then we're all like, go out and get things. Um, but um, yeah, I've always been a, uh, a human female avatar pretty much mm. most of the time but with just different hair and different clothes. And yeah. Uh, what about you? What about you, Squeaky? Because you've got a very distinct avatar. Um, I'm. I have a few avatars, but I mostly stay in this one for well, 
originally it just started with the name. I tried to find something that fits the name, and that's <laughs> kind of what I've been sticking with. Um, but as Evan said, with QA and all that, we do need to change sometimes to actually figure out what works and what doesn't, because, yeah, mm-hmm. sometimes it works on this and the others don't. As for um, uh, what we're used to, I usually stick to furry editors, because, well, that's just what I like, so. And uh, Missy, what about you? Well, I know that with my resident avatar, I'm very attached to the way she looks. Like I dream about her sometimes. So the idea of changing her is it's very difficult. It'd be like going in for cosmetic surgery. So I really enjoy my mole avatar because. I, if there is a certain look that I want to create, I feel much more free to do that. So I, I have had a lot of fun. I mean, right now I look pretty normal, but I have had a lot of fun with being able to go in and play with different avatar looks on my mole account. What about you, Elota? Well, personality wise, um... My resident and I are the same, like, because uh, so now we'll feel a little bit psycho giving them different personalities. But yeah. um, looking wise, um, I guess my resident is more like it has a very specific look, and I try to keep it that way. It's more like a story, like what, what he's telling from, from his look. But as a lot of, I'm everything I want to be in the moment, which gives me that freedom. And I feel more like the SL experience after all, because in SL you can be anything you want to be. So, but I do feel the freedom. Like I'm a frog sometimes, like you said the other day, sometimes people here have seen me as a frog in the event or as a skeleton drinking bleach, or I'm a girl sometimes because I need to take a picture as a girl and you'll see me like buying girl stuff around. (laughs) So, so, It, It depends on the mood and what I'm doing. Sometimes I just want to have fun and then be around residents and, and just making them have a laugh sometimes. So, Yeah. Well, that's a good reason as any. Uh, <clears throat> how are you guys placed for talking longer? I know that some of you, it must be getting incredibly late now. Shall we wrap it up after the next question? I'm sorry that sure. we have to do this because I think everyone has enjoyed talking to you, hearing what you have to say. But let's go with one more question. All right, last one's kind of a fun one. So which one of us is most likely to be the Leroy Jenkins of the group when it comes to solving problems and creative input? Ooh. What do you think? Which of you is likely to be the Leroy Jenkins? That's kind of hard to answer because I'm not getting the reference. The Leroy Jenkins. Can somebody clarify? Patch? Leroy Jenkins? Um, well, I, th- I, I think... If I had to guess, it's it's basically like who who out of us would probably run in uh, to a situation <laughs> um, with uh, probably a uh, you know no holds barred kind of way of fixing uh, or doing something um, you know probably who would have the most energetic uh, response to uh, solving an issue. As far as like like putting out a fire or something broke mm-hmm. and you got to run in and uh, yeah, I tend to do that a lot. I I was I was gonna vote for you. Yeah, yeah. Go on, and figure out. Well, going back to the whole poop thing, I, I think <laughs> I was the one who figured out how how they how they were uh, determining which one was the good one. Hmm. I think I I. I, I, I yeah. think probably I do a, a little bit of it. I think I think you do a little bit of it. 
Yeah. I, I, I <laughs> Whenever something happens. It's kind of that, that uh, you know, do you have the ability to think like the criminal or think like the griefer <laughs> and figure out, you know, how they're going to do things. And, and I, I, I kind of have that mm. to a certain degree. A bit like uh, the whole Hannibal Lecter uh, thing, <laughs> getting into his the mind of Hannibal Lecter in order to right, solve right. the crimes. Yeah, it, exactly, exactly. Mm. It's like, well, how how are the residents gonna gonna react when? Oh, we'll just we'll just eat them with some fava beans and scanty. Um, <laughs> it's a nice scanty, yes. Okay, well, I've got one final question. <coughs> and I think Patch would take the lead on it. I realise at the moment you're all frantically busy with the Linden Homes, and that looks likely to continue for a long while. But <coughs> um, are there any plans for anything else in the future? Can you say? Um, I don't. I don't think we, we. So I don't have any surprises up my sleeve per se, other than you know new home types and themes and things of that nature. Um, you know, our our focus probably for the nearer future is you know going to be all Linden homes. Uh, you know, that's mm-hmm. got a lot of visibility on it. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, we, we'll have some stuff coming up at the end of holidays. You know, so maybe some gifts and things and, mm-hmm. um. And of course, it'll be yeah. Halloween as well. Sure. Yeah, we have our you know Halloween stuff and you know our holiday stuff for the winter. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. We've got some we've got some exciting testing and experience work and stuff like that that we've got also lined up for the new user experience, um, and yes. you know some other avatar work and stuff like that. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't have like a. I don't have like a horizons or a paleo quest up our sleeve right at the at the moment though. Right. Okay, I know you can't tell us specifically all the Linden homes that we can expect, but can you give us like an estimate of how many new types could be coming in the pipeline? Oh, I don't know. Um, I think there's probably at least eight themes in the pipeline. Uh, and And we probably have not seriously considered a couple dozen um wow. you know but as as far as what we've kind of pinned down and say we would really like to do this and we would really like to do that um mm-hmm. yeah we're we're probably somewhere around 8 right now wow it it's yeah. very open ended it, it's very much we want to be able to kind of uh go with the flow and mm-hmm. see how you know cuz we'll come up with ideas oh what if we did this and yeah, that'll work. Or uh, no, that's a bad idea uh, for various regions or reasons. And so we're leaving it very kind of uh, taking it as we go. I guess to some extent that if you're going to keep the theme of the continent, you can't go too wild and wacky. You know, you couldn't suddenly have a spaceship as part of Belisaria, although you probably could as a separate continent. Yeah, see, like that's that's one of those themes that's kind of out there for us. It's like we've we've thought about space, you know, and what could that potentially look like and stuff like that. In the context of Belisaria itself, probably not. No. Um, but is it something that we could potentially touch at some point? Maybe. Mm. That sounds fun. Well, I think we've come to the end now, sadly. Um, And I think we should definitely have a Meet the Moles next year at Second Life 17B, as well as our Meet the Linden conversations. What do you think, audience? But for now, I'm going to say thank you very much to Patch Linden, and all the moles here, both the talking ones and the non-talking ones. And yes, a huge, huge thank you for all the work you do. Thank you for having us. It's been a great week.
and we're getting a lot of feedback now from the audience so thank you everyone and goodbye from SL16B and the moles. <laughs>